Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been forever and a day since I uploaded my last DIY video. Um, really, since I've uploaded my last video, my last two videos were baby clothing hauls, so it's been even longer since I've uploaded a DIY. But today I finally have another DIY that I'm so excited to share with you guys. Last month, my cousins and I planned a special surprise baby shower for my cousin's wife. So my cousin was in on it. His wife had no idea. This is their second baby that's on the way. They didn't get to have a baby shower for their first child since he's in the military. So they've always been kind of away from the family. And now they're in Seattle. And even though none of us live in Seattle either, we still wanted to be able to fly out for the weekend and just surprise them and really do something special for them. So the theme of the baby shower was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Really, really cute theme. And of course, I immediately knew that I wanted to make something for the shower. The tricky thing was that I needed to make something that I could easily bring to Seattle with me because obviously I would be flying there. So I needed something that I knew would package well and that wouldn't get damaged along the way, but still be really cute and impactful um, during the baby shower. After thinking of different things, I thought of a dream catcher. I don't really know what sparked that idea in my head, but I thought of a dream catcher and I thought it would work really well with the theme because Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, nighttime sleeping, dream catcher, dreams, you know, it all fits together. So I figured I would do that, but you'll see it kind of turns out not to be so much of a dream catcher, but that was my inspiration for this DIY. But let's just get into it and see what I did. So to start, I bought this pinwheel from my local 99 cent store. I needed a large ring to create my foundation and this was perfect. I just needed the large wheel, so I set the other pieces aside for a possible future project. I cut off all the ribbons in the center, and then afterwards I used my seam ripper to take off the fabric on the ring. The next step was to cover the ring in yarn. As you can see, I had twine sitting on the table as an option as well, but I knew the white would look beautiful in the end, and I loved the softness of it. I started by tying the end in a knot, and because it kept moving as I was trying to wrap the yarn around, I ended up using a glue dot to hold the first knot in place before I continued wrapping the yarn around. I wrapped the excess yarn around the rest of the glue dot to cover that up. The trick to this wrapping process is to hold onto the last tightened spot with one hand while you wrap the yarn around a few times with the other. Then with your left hand again, begin to twist and tighten the yarn in the direction of the original knot until you come out with a clean, tightly wrapped ring. As you can see, my ball of yarn turned into a pile of spaghetti during this process, but don't worry, I took the time after this project to roll it back up nice and neat. Once I wrapped the entire ring, which trust me, took a lot longer than I expected, um, I made it back to the initial knot and then I added another glue dot for extra security and then wrapped that last centimeter or so of yarn around that and finished it off with a knot. Then I came in with my scissors to trim off any excess yarn. As I mentioned earlier, I originally envisioned a dream catcher for this project, which I thought would have been a great idea. Um, their daughter also has a dream catcher in her room as well. So I thought that would have been cute to tie the rooms together. But after laying out all of my materials for kind of a rough draft look, there just wasn't enough blue in it. And I didn't have any blue thread to weave the dream catcher. And this is supposed to be like a nighttime themed project. So I definitely wanted blue in there. Um, luckily, I did buy this Oh Baby sign at Target in the $3 bin just in case. And it ended up being the perfect piece to add to this project. The blue flower obviously didn't fit in with the theme, so I tried to peel it off, but holy moly, was that some industrial strength glue. I had to end up using my scissors to cut it off, and it didn't come off cleanly by any means, but that's okay. We're just going to cover it up later. I also removed the original ribbon, which was thankfully just tied on, and then I replaced it with this beautiful thin baby blue ribbon, making sure it was the perfect length to hang right in the middle of the ring. 
To secure the ribbon to the ring, I used another glue dot. However, I probably would have gone back and added extra ribbon over it to cover it up a little bit better. Next thing I did was take this really pretty glittery white felt sheet I purchased from Hobby Lobby to create a moon. I chose this particular sheet because it's actually a lot thicker and stiffer than your regular felt sheets. I freehanded the moon, but you could definitely draw it out first or use a stencil if you want so you don't waste as much felt if you wanted to keep it for another project. It took a lot of trimming and adjusting, but this was my final moon shape. Now that I had my moon cut out, I also wanted to cut out a cloud shape before I attached the moon. I used cardboard for the base of my cloud because I wanted it to be very sturdy and I didn't want to risk it drooping down. Of course the cloud also took a lot of tweaking until I was happy with it, but the cloud had a little more wiggle room because I'm actually going to be covering it up with cotton balls to really achieve the look that I want. Once I was pleased with both shapes, I hot glued them directly onto the ring. I glued a little on the front first to make sure it was in the exact place I wanted it and then flipped the whole thing over and added more glue to make sure it was secure. After that was all dry, it was time to add the cotton balls. I pulled the cotton balls apart a little bit because I liked how it made it a little bit more airy. This does make the gluing process a little more tricky though because you have to make sure you don't have too many loose pieces of cotton. I continue to add cotton balls, pull them apart more, or press them back together in certain spots until I felt like the cloud shape was really defined. Next step was to make the stars that would be hanging from the ring. Typically in a dream catcher you would see feathers and beads or something of that sort. But since I was doing a twinkle little star theme, of course doing stars instead of feathers was much more fitting. I used regular felt for these stars. I sketched out the stars by hand because I really liked the idea of each of the stars being all different and imperfect. Once they were drawn, I cut them out and then partially hot glued them to another sheet of felt. The reason we're only gluing part of it is because we're going to stuff these stars with more cotton balls to add another three dimensional element to this piece. I cut them out after they were glued and then began to stuff them. I ripped apart the cotton balls again here simply because they would have just been too big otherwise and I also wanted to get some of the cotton into the points of the stars. If I had more time I think I would have sewn the stars together instead of gluing them because that would have allowed more room for the stuffing. Before closing them I also grabbed the same ribbon I used to hang the O baby sign and glued the end into each of the stars. Since the stars were going to be hanging, I knew they could twist around and I didn't want the end of the ribbon showing no matter which side of the star was visible. Then I closed the rest of the star up with more hot glue and also doubled back to the side that I originally glued to make sure all of the seams were completely together. Of course, some glue oozed out in this process, but I just went back and trimmed it off. Once all the stars were finished, I flipped over my ring to begin attaching it. Make sure you cut your ribbons longer than you'd need so you have room to play with the length of where each star falls. To attach them, I simply hot glued it to the back of the cardboard cloud. And this is the final product. I love how it turned out. This was such an easy project that anyone can do. And I'm also so thankful we were able to get it to Seattle without any damage. If you're curious about how I packed it, it was just wide enough to fit into my suitcase and I sandwiched it in between two pieces of cardboard and then added some pieces of tape around the side so it was really nice and tight and then I threw the whole thing into a garbage bag and then put that into my suitcase. I was a little bit nervous and kind of considered it just carrying it on board with me and holding it with me the whole time um, but you know having to deal with all of our baby stuff and our baby I figured that was just too much carry-on baggage, so I did put it in our luggage and it made it to Seattle safely, thank goodness. I still do want to end up doing a dream catcher. I've never made one before, um, so maybe another opportunity will arise and I'll do a DIY video for that. But again, I am so sorry it's been forever since I posted a DIY. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me and tuning in this time around. I promise you I have other DIYs already filmed that I just need to start editing as soon as this one is up. I know you guys are going to enjoy those as well. So 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I haven't given up on you guys. Don't give up on me. I'm still going to be producing more content for you guys. Just be a little bit patient with me and I promise there will be so much more to come. So thank you again. Love you and I'll see you in the next video.